Tommy, Tyler had a really good performance last week uh, for S2. He was uh, made part of that USL uh, reserve squad, but he stopped at PK. What have you made of his, of his development so far in the last couple of years? Well, he's on a good progression right now. I mean, the most important thing for him is getting games. So last week he was able to play against Nacoxa, and then uh, Brian played against uh, Sacramento, and then you know he got the game against Portland, and it was very good. So uh, it was, he, he made some huge saves. What's been the biggest area of focus for him improving and growing as a goalkeeper? Just getting games. Getting games is the most important thing for him and becoming consistent in games, whether it's his decision making, whether it's his handling, just becoming more consistent. How instrumental has Steph been to his development? Is there a kind of like a relationship? Obviously, there's a relationship. But yeah. Is there more of a mentorship relationship that's formed? I think, you know, to be honest with you, I, I, Steph is great with all of them. I mean, he helped, everybody helps each other. Um, they all want to be the goalkeeper, the number one guy. But they all know there's only one guy that can play, so they support everybody. And Steph is massively supportive of anybody who's working within the group, whether it's the number three guy, four guy, number two guy, he's always helpful. What do you think the biggest thing is that he brings to the table that he can teach other goalkeepers? His work ethic. His work ethic is unbelievable. Yeah. How do you keep a backup in this league? Backups can maybe not see first team for two, three years. They still, they still come out and are productive. What's the challenge for the young guy What's your coaching technique with these young guys? Just trying to keep them sharp every day at training, you know, and remind them that, you know, let's let's get something out of the session today, every day that you're here. Um, it's not easy. Like you said, I mean, there's some guys will wait four or five years until they play. Luckily, we have our second team. Uh, years past, we had the reserve team, but it's not the same as first team. Just trying to keep them as sharp as possible. Keep encouraging them to come out. You never know when your chance is going to come. So kind of like Meredith was for us in 2012. And you know, we had some injuries and he played. So being prepared. How encouraging is it to see the team get their first clean sheet? Oh, it was awesome for the guys. The guys, I thought, I thought our backs were very good. I thought the entire team was very good. I know you guys have talked about it, but I thought everybody in front of Steph was fantastic. And then the saves that he had to make, that he, he made them clean and didn't give up rebounds in the bad areas. And you know, it was a well-deserved clean sheet. What's the challenge for the keeper when all of a sudden there's really three guys that aren't in those positions going with the Lamb and yeah. Svensson and, and Alfaro? What's the challenge for the keeper with new backs? Well, one of the things that we talk about is manage those guys in front of you the best that you can. You know, you have to be ultimately be a coach on the field in those moments and, and manage them and help them and put them in good spots. If you are going to play them a ball or if you're going to help them in their defensive, make sure you give them good early communication and making sure you're clear and decisive. What are the biggest differences you've noticed with Steph from when he first got here from Toronto coming off the injuries yeah. to now where you're making the legendary save in MLS Cup and he's really entrenched as one of the... Yeah, I mean, I always go back to with Steph in 2014. It was that Open Cup game here at Starfire against Portland. And from then on, he really just took off. Now, I saw it before then training, but just again, what we were talking about earlier is consistency. Just being consistent game in and game out and getting those games. And you can see his confidence grow. Now, from a, from a goalkeeper perspective, technically, he's gotten cleaner. Positionally, he's very good. And in the last year or so, he's gotten better with his feet as well, making good decisions with his feet. What was it like for you to make him, uh, watch him uh, make that save in the cup from your perspective? Was that kind of like an extra emotional thing for you, seeing your guy uh, who you work with every day come through like that? You know, I've had so many people ask me about that. You know, and I always would go back to I was so happy for him, first and foremost, because he had had a good game up to that point. But as when those things happen, if a good save happens, I mean, that's all on the team and the goalkeeper, to be honest with you, you know, so. Hey, Tony, I got a, a question for you. Sure. The sound of philosophy in terms from a goalkeeper perspective, getting the ball out, what is that philosophy? Yeah, I mean, we're a team that wants to play out of the back when we can. We want to be 100% in possession. And, and philosophy for me as the goalkeeper is once you kill that play, once you've made that save, let's go. Let's keep possession now. Can we play out of the back and get our team into the attack as quick as possible? And then about defense in terms of Rodan and uh, uh, Alonzo. Their, their defense seems to be critical in terms of the back line, how they come back and where they come back. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, the integral part is obviously the guy who plays in front of the two center backs. When he comes back to receive the ball, whether we're playing with three up front, whether we're playing two up front, maybe it's one up front at times pressing. He has to time it just at the right time and come into this right spaces for us to play out of the back. And then the position of center back has evolved a little bit. Right? Yeah, oh, it's yeah. not like back French, back and back. Right, 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 right. How has that evolved and what does that do to the right back and the left back? Well, first and foremost, they have to be able to defend, right? And that's right. but th but they have to be able to you know play the ball. They have to be able to be comfortable with the ball and be able to get us out and, and drive the team a little bit from an offensive standpoint.
Yeah. Tommy, I mean, if you're if you're playing a, a really prolific striker, obviously the back four has a lot of preparation for that. How much does the goalkeeper have to prepare? For instance, Chris Wondolowski yeah. against San Jose, ten goals against the Sounders, the most. He, you know, we we prepare. I won't say we we change our preparation, but I'll be honest with you. When we used to play LA Galaxy, where did Robbie Keane get a lot of his goals? For me to prepare the goalkeeper, we used to do a little bit more cutbacks. Mm -hmm. For someone like Wando, you just have to be prepared because in 87th minute he's still running and he's still putting you under pressure. So you have to remember those times. Okay, look at making sure the center backs are looking over their shoulder and you're communicating that as the goalkeeper. But we don't change too much. Mm -hmm. But some some strikers we had changed some training sessions for, you know. Is a sense do you jam the middle, you know, in that because he's a keen, like you said. You're talking about Wando. Good. Yeah, and, and you know th those those poachers in the box. Yeah, just being just being ready for him as he makes those runs in the box, making sure somebody's picked up on him, making sure someone's touched tight to him at all times, whether it's a cross, cutback, whatever it may be. And how important is the weak side help on that? One? Massively, any cutback, he's got to come across. The weak side has to come across and give him cover. Okay.